I was first on the scene to show everybody that the CEO of WestJet tweeted the most bomb thing. All right, well, hold on here. Can I can I really say the most bomb thing when he's the CEO of WestJet? Because you can't say that word in and around airports or planes. I don't apologize because I'm in neither right now. He went on Twitter. And he said that uh, the mandates are ridiculous. They need to totally drop the mandates. They don't justify anything now. We've seen it. We've gone through it. It didn't work. Let's get back to normal. The CEO of WestJet, okay, not not employee, not a shareholder, right? Not 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 a person who took the flight. No, no, the freaking CEO, the face of WestJet. I mean, granted, okay, I've never seen his face before. Now I know who he is. WestJet has my utmost respect. And whenever I have an opportunity to fly again. I'll for certain be flying with WestJet. And uh, I told you in that video that it's going to be a ripple effect. You're going to see later this week and next week, big players. I freaking said it. I said big players are going to start to stand up and speak again because it's all about having the motivation to do it. These companies are afraid to do it because they're, they don't feel like people have their back and they don't want to be ostracized. Well, they've been proven time and time again that we have their back, that millions, millions of Canadians stand up for freedom. We're over this. This is ridiculous. It's not justifiable. And here we go again. That's what we got today. We have another big player. We have the travel and tourism sector, the rep of the entire travel and tourism sector stands up and calls for the mandates to be abolished you ready for this it's gonna be a great one good morning thank you for joining us here today merci d'être ici avec nous aujourd'hui my name is Susie grenell and i'm the president and ceo of the hotel association of canada i'm pleased to be here today with my colleagues from the travel and tourism industry as you all know the travel tourism and hospitality sectors were the hardest hit during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Necessary public health restrictions shuttered many of our businesses, most of whom barely made it to the other side. We did our part to keep Canadians safe, and now it is finally our turn to recover. Travel is back with a vengeance, and we could not be happier. But the passenger experience at our Canadian airports is a challenge. We have lengthy delays on the tarmac. We have hours of lineups at customs, we're asking people to complete duplicative health checks. We still have random arrivals testing that is compounding the delays oh, yeah. and frustration. So for all the people watching who aren't maybe aware, when you go to the airports, right, you, you need to be you need to be like quintuple vax or something crazy. And they still uh, check your temperature. They still do all these things. So the lines are excruciating long, excruciating long. It's ridiculous. So it's backing everything up because they can't keep up with dude they got a, a rapid test for every single person that flies or something like that man it's just totally absurd it's a waste of money it's a waste of resources and it's delaying everything it's delaying flights flights are, are there's you literally got like dozens of planes on the tarmacs waiting to fly because people are landing and everything's just backlogged it's crazy pearson airport in uh toronto is a complete mess all the major airports in all the major cities are a complete mess. Rating passengers. At issue today is the fact that travel volumes are increasing, but COVID restrictions and requirements continue to linger. And that is creating congestion at our airports and contributing to a poor impression of Canada and our international travelers. This hurts our tourism industry at a time when we are desperately trying to recover. It adds uncertainty frustration and anxiety to the traveler experience. And it hurts our local tourism operators and hotels who are losing bookings because people are choosing other, less congested options. Mm -hmm. Many other countries like Italy, the UK, Switzerland have fully opened up travel and are fiercely competitive destinations. We believe that Canada should follow suit. So as we gear up for what we hope will be an incredibly busy summer, we are calling on the government today to alleviate the pain points is. and remove unnecessary restrictions. Yep. À l'aube de l'été, nous demandons au gouvernement fédéral de supprimer oh, les restrictions inutiles. <laughs> we must move away from emergency measures that were necessary at the height of the pandemic towards a more measured and modern system. 
We are pleased that the government is increasing staffing and remove mandatory uh, testing requirements for travelers in transit, but we need to go further and faster. We can emerge from COVID with a vibrant and thriving travel and tourism sector, and we can fix these delays, and we can do it in time for the summer rush, but we need action today. Mm-hmm. With that, I'll hand it over to Interim President and CEO of the Canadian Airports Council, Manette Pasher. Merci. So, like, everyone's been cooped up, right? We've, we've all been cooped up. We're ready to go. It would be tremendous for the travel and tourism industry. It'd be tremendous for all the small uh, communities around Canada to just open up all the mandates because we would go nuts. We would go, we would just fly everywhere all the time, all summer. It would be great. It'd be amazing. We've been cooped up for so long. Why wouldn't we do that? It would inject so much money into our economy. But no, 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 no. Wear, wear seven masks and, and take the needle like an addict. Thank you, Susie. And thank you to the Canadian Travel and Tourism Roundtable for bringing us together today. Canada's hub airports have consistently been ranked among the best in the world for customer satisfaction and efficiency, including throughout the pandemic. Our airports know how to serve passengers to the highest levels, but we need government to act urgently to remove the remaining public health requirements at the border by June 15th. In order to alleviate the pressures currently facing travelers at Canada's airports. We are pleased the the federal government has worked with our federal agencies to increase the number of CATSA and CBSA screening officers and also to eliminate random testing for transiting passengers. Mm -hmm. These were encouraging steps forward coming out of the working groups composed of senior industry and government representatives. But there is still more work to do and it's urgent. The summer travel season is upon us, and international traffic at our arrivals at our airports is projected to increase by 50% at hub airports this summer. Wow. We need to move quickly to resolve issues and smooth out the travel experience on arrival into our country. We are urging the federal government to take three concrete actions in the short term to immediately alleviate pressure on the system. They include removing on-site mandatory random testing from Canada's airports, removing Public Health Agency of Canada's duplicate health check questions at government custom checkpoints at the international border, and removing vaccination mandates for CATSA and CBSA workers. There is a lot of pent-up demand for travel. We are seeing it. In May, our hub airports were seeing 70% of pre-pandemic passenger traffic levels. Canada's four hub airports are currently processing on average of 56,000 international passengers a day. I can't get over the fact that she said remove the mandates for CBSA, uh, was it employees? I mean, you remove the mandates for everybody, bro. There's so many stewardess, uh, flight attendants, and things like that, pilots that everyone lost their jobs. Millions of Canadians lost their jobs because they're they're entitled to uh, make the decision on how what goes into their body, right? They're entitled to make their own medical decision, and um, and because that didn't fit the federal government's uh, narrative or mandates they got fired and it's it's ridiculous there's people from home there's people that i know that work corporate jobs that that work from home and they were forced to get the vaccines they work from home what that doesn't even make any sense whatsoever so this has just been a big theatrical experience right and now like i said in that WestJet video you're seeing the big people the big hitters this is this is the representation of the entire travel and tourism sector okay you're going to start seeing big hotel ceos standing up you're going to start seeing big transportation ceos standing up mark my words folks next week you're going to start to see it and that's forecasted to grow by eighty thousand a day this summer. It is challenging to manage that level of traffic with leftover legacy public health protocols still in place at our international borders. 
It would normally take a customs agent about 30 seconds to process a passenger at their desk, and now it is taking two to four times that because of these public health protocols. Normal travel levels cannot coexist with current public health protocols in place within our airport facilities. We need to do all we can to facilitate smooth travel in our country, and that requires the removal of these public health restrictions. I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague Suzanne at the National Airlines Council of Canada. Oh. Look at this. Good morning. I'm Suzanne Acton Gervais. I'm interim president and CEO of the National Airlines Council of Canada. She kind of looks like uh, Leslie Nope from uh, uh, Parks and Rec. <laughs> Since the onset of the pandemic, Canada's major airlines have been committed to protecting employee and passenger health and have continued to invest heavily in the safe restart of travel and tourism in order to drive our national recovery in every region of, our, of our, the country. While the road to recovery has not been easy, we know it can and will improve, and we are seeing progress already. While the numbers are still short of pre-COVID times, more people are traveling now compared to since the onset of the pandemic in 2020. Canadians are eager to return to travel as are international visitors looking to come to Canada for business or to discover our beautiful nation, and this is a good and sign. And to see our dictator. But part of welcoming travelers back is ensuring that their experience is predictable timely and enjoyable, with clear service standards and performance metrics similar to other nations. Canada is in a post-pandemic environment, which includes high levels of vaccination, as well as mm. high levels of prior infection. That is why the National Airlines Council of Canada will continue to advocate for clear direction on evidence-based health protocols and a plan our industry can work towards, a plan and a path for the continued operation of our industry that recognize what we have learned from the pandemic and the government responses must be predictable. Aviation is global, and therefore by extension, so is the travel and tourism industry, and Canada needs to align with the international community. It is yep. time for the government of Canada to revisit COVID-19 pandemic restrictions placed on air travel, in line with the growing list of over 50 countries that have removed barriers to travel altogether. Look at that. It is time for the government of Canada to revisit <clears throat> COVID-19 uh, pandemic restrictions for the, and the continuation of legacy pandemic era public health restrictions, many of which exclusively remain in place just for air travel, as it will continue to create bottlenecks for travelers. The government also needs to require that their agencies meet the intended levels of service, which cite service excellence and performance benchmarks. As demand for travel returns and the global economies reopen, Canada's border policies need to reflect the new reality. If not, Canada risks being a country left behind. You said it. We urge the government to listen to those who know the reality on the ground and bring forward changes rapidly. I mean, aren't the we already left behind? By colleagues here today. Realistically, aren't we already? Like, we're the laughing stock of the world. Everybody knows that we have a dictator, right? Like, we're already pretty much left behind. Now, we can fix it, absolutely. Get Trudeau out, get Pierre in. That's a great way to fix it. But we are already being left behind today will have tremendous impact and take us where we need to go in time for the summer travel season. While we welcome the steps taken so far, we need relief in the short term. This is not just about our businesses, it is about the traveler experience. We are eager to work with the Government of Canada to restore a seamless, predictable and enjoyable experience for travelers. Thank you. I would like to now turn it over to Patrick Doyle, Vice President and General Manager at American Express Global Business Travel. American Express? Thank you. The travel and tourism industry has only just begun the long road, long road to recovery after two years of uncertainty. Hey, I'm stopping that there. I'm stopping that there. I don't know who else is going to be in this video, but uh, yeah, no, I'm stopping that there. <laughs> it's like another 20 minutes or 10 minutes long. I'm stopping that there. Maybe I'll clip that one and, and talk about how the American Express is standing up. I told you, bro. I just told you. I just freaking said, I just freaking said, big players are starting to stand up. Now you're going to see American Express. You're going to see uh, banks standing up, probably CIBC, right? You're going to uh, RBC. I don't know about RBC. I, they might have uh, quite a few ties with uh, the Liberal government. Uh, Bank of Montreal, they should definitely be standing up soon. Big, big, big players, man. 
And uh, once all that pressure gets put onto the federal government, they got no choice. They got no choice. So this is huge, huge video. Wow. Amazing information. Well, I'm glad we got to watch that together. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around. Give a like, right? Subscribe. Turn the bell notifications on because that's what's really going to help you being able to see these videos. Now, I know, I know. We're doing good in the algorithm. I pop up on your home feed. I'm there in the recommendeds. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. But having notifications on really helps uh, push it out even further. And then you'll be notified when these beautiful, beautiful videos come out. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Sorry? I thought I was going to make it through this, but I'm not. It hurts. Emotional damage!